Uh, okay, you know what I'd like to do is uh, explain for people who were like listening, like, okay, television festival, what does that mean? Is that like a movie festival? So people like bring TV shows they've made from home or how does that work? You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, I don't think that's it or maybe it is. I don't know. Let's no. dig into that. Like, what is it? You know, what is it about? It is funny. I mean, I think since we started it, which Emily and I, like, we just had this idea and spent a year sort of going around pitching it and people were like, it, it, it weirdly makes a ton of sense. And it is also a head scratcher for a lot of people. <laughs> like they don't quite understand. They're like, I've heard of a film festival and a music yeah. festival. They just can't quite get to television. Festival. <laughs> yeah. It is my, until they've come. And then it's their favorite thing, which is essentially, it is a, a film festival, but for television where we screen television shows and talk about them afterwards with the people who make them. But then we also do panels on a variety of topics of how things get made or themes or social issues, or we do a lot of reunions. So we're historically a third past, a third current and a third premiere. So that past is reunions canceled too soon. All your favorites, all the nostalgia, yeah. people sure. love it. Um, anything that's currently being made, even if it's kind of off season and then we launch new shows. So the thing that we are primarily is we are primarily scripted. We do every once in a while do some unscripted or docu series, but like 95 and a half percent is scripted shows. Yeah. Um, and we are, uh, I have to find new words for this, but like we're on <laughs> network studios and streaming devices. It's not independent television. If it is independent, if it's something like you made a, you made a TV show at home, sometimes we have an opportunity for that, but most likely, I mean, the last few years, HBOs are opening or closing night, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, all of those guys. TV in the last 10 years is also like redefining itself. Every other, you know, where Absolutely. is the line? between TV and film. And we are, we struggle to find it sometimes and we talk about it. I think the other part, while we will sometimes have a feature length film of some sort, we are also 90 plus percent uh, episodic. So, you know, whether that's 22 episodes, 22 minutes or 112 minutes, it is, it has, you know, four to six episodes or 22 episodes. It is chapter based storytelling. Um, but yeah, I mean, up until the pandemic, it was in movie theaters and in, you know, the the Paramount Theater and in hotel ballrooms for conversations. Now it's it's online, um, but it's it's fans and industry. It's like it, it is everyday TV fan consumers who just love television, and it's the people who make it who hilariously also love it. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> At our heart, we are, we call ourselves a celebration of TV and from the outside looking in, it looks very much like it's structured like a film festival. Just that concept of people waiting in line and going into a theater and whether you're watching a yeah. panel or screening, but the biggest difference is, I mean, film festivals really started as a place for independent movies to get distribution and for them Correct. to find an audience because they yeah. weren't going to be in theaters. Whereas that's not who we are. Like we are really celebrating TV that's already out there. And gotcha. that already been made or is about to be on your small screens, wherever you are, and really bringing together that community. So it has a different purpose to it as opposed sure. to it's still TV that either has an audience or trying to find an audience, um, which is great for us because we get to spotlight a lot of shows that we feel didn't get the acclaim that they deserve. <laughs> we get to kind of put on a stage and hopefully help an audience find them. Unfortunately, some of them aren't with us anymore, but it really is a look at TV from all aspects and really diving into what it is. There are a handful of other TV festivals out there and they all have different points of view or different purposes. Like there is an independent TV festival that just screens independent pilots that are looking for homes. And looking oh, wow. For yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there are ones that are much more like very heavy industry focused on like how to get into television, where sure. ours is really for fans of TV, which is, as Kate said, half of them are industry and half of them are just people that love television and are interested in the behind the scenes, but have zero desire to work in it. They just yeah, totally. love the story. Would you guys ever think about adding an arm that that does focus on trying to get people signed or whatever, right? Get their show out there. 
Um, I think we've talked about it before and we've definitely shown things that were independently made. Um, oftentimes that's coming from sort of established television makers. They've just sure. gone a different direction. We did a show yeah. called everyone's doing great. <laughs> great. Everyone's doing great. Um, that two actors, writers from a show one tree Hill did, and they made it independently. They raised the money on GoFundMe or Indiegogo and it sold to Hulu this year. So like we've, we've been a part of stories like that. The place where we want to be, uh, you know, we do, we're very passionate about, you know, breaking down doors and giving people more access and spotlighting people who maybe need help finding their way into the industry. So we have a lot of partnerships. We've worked with Sundance Episodic Labs and The Blacklist, um, and we have a pitch competition. So rather than say, oh, go no. make your pilot, and now let's help find a home for it, it's more finding writers and getting them access to the industry. And we, it's not an official mentorship program, but um, the finalists and the, the winner and the runner-up, we end up pairing them with writers. Because I think the thing with TV, while there is still an exception to the rule, if you go make a, a really amazing pilot or short, that might help you sell your show. You do still need studios and networks to make it. Um, yeah. YouTube exists and that is a very specific thing. But unlike making an independent film where like you could do a really amazing job and then a studio buys it and distributes it, TV, the pilot's just chapter one. You need, you need this investment from kind of a, a some version of a system around you. Um, and so I think finding those writers and those voices and pairing them with people, it's TV, I mean, film and music are also collaborative, but television being the episodic nature of it, that it's not a one and done, it's a ongoing thing yeah. for whatever you've decided that length or, or whatever, whatever you're allowed that length to be, you need a lot of people and support around you. So I think that's where we're, we want to find the, the people and help them through the door is how do you teach them and give them access to decision makers and opportunity to tell their stories more than go make it. And then if it's good, we'll, we'll buy it kind of thing. Well, sure. also pilots are really hard. I mean, think of all the yeah. terrible the amazing shows, shows terrible yeah, yeah. mainstream yeah. shows that their pilots are terrible. When you see a really great pilot, even for a mainstream network or streaming show, you're like, wow, that pilot was really great. And it's almost a surprise. Mm -hmm. Pilots are really, really tough. And so an independent pilot, you even have even more cards stacked against you. So sure. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs>